Good afternoon, Dr. Rodriguez. Can you hear us? Yes, sir, I can. We can hear you loud and clear. Thank you, sir. Turn the mic on. Okay. okay. Good afternoon, Attorney Williams. Can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Sound check complete. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I sincerely hope that everyone is feeling well and enjoying the spring light weather minus the pollen. <laughs> Thank you for adjusting your schedule to join us one half early, half hour earlier today, and for joining us on a Thursday. We're nearing a much deserved break in our school schedules. Beginning next week, our schools will be closed. Uh, uh, for spring break beginning March 29th. Please find time to relax and rest and enjoy your family and friends. Be safe and re-energize for the last lap of this school year. Our meetings are public meetings. If you should ever need to know what decisions we make at the meetings, um, feel free to reach out to our superintendent, board members, Mrs. Hayes, or myself. Our minutes of our meetings are posted on the website after they are approved during the following month's meeting. We encourage everyone to stay informed. The correct knowledge is power. Our vision is our destination, where we are going and when we plan to get there. Our mission is our purpose, our goal, why we exist. It inspires us to action. Our core values are what we believe. Our values drive us and motivate us to continue the course of action. Our goal is to realize our vision and our mission and to fulfill our core values every day. Let's continue to find ways that promote energy, pride, and excitement in our schools. 
I have the honor this afternoon of introducing our guest ministers for today's meeting, Minister Karen Sparrow McLam. Karen is the mother of one daughter, Jasmine, and a product of being reared in a God-fearing home, as well as being educated in Clinton City Schools, especially at Butler Avenue School. Karen is a prior graduate of the Clinton High School class of 1972. She attended and graduated from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill with a degree in social studies. She was influenced by two of her Clinton High School social studies teachers, the late Mrs. Lois Blackman and Mr. William Whitaker. She taught in Richmond County Schools and Clinton City Schools and finally retired from Johnston County Schools. Karen also received her Master's of Christian Education degree from Campbell University in 2014. Being a student at Campbell really solidified her ministry calling, as well as her mission to be an example of God's goodness, grace, and mercy. Karen grew up attending Union Grove Disciples Church, but was first inspired to dedicate her life to Christ after watching the movie, The Hiding Place, the story of Corey Tan Boone. Karen's goal in life is to continue to study to show her self-approved, a workman not ashamed who rightly devised the word of truth as a Bible teacher and preacher. She continuously seeks to follow God's voice to lead her down the right path. Now, please join me in welcoming Minister Karen Sparrow McClam. To God be the glory. Let us bow our heads. Father God in heaven, oh God, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we lift you up because you are worthy of all the praise. Lord, I thank you for this meeting that's about to occur. Lord God, they want to seek your face. Lord, they want to hear your voice. That's why they're asking for prayer. God, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Lord, you're so good and your mercy endure forever. Lord God, I just praise you for this group who was appointed, whom you anointed to be members of the Clinton City School Board. God, stay with them. Stand by them. Lord God, hear their cries. Lord God, as uh, the, in the name of Jesus, I'm trying to think of the um, the man who, who was ruling uh, England, Churchill. As Churchill said, Father, you got to go through to get through. Lord, he also said, if you're going through hell, keep going. God, Father, Lord, you know their hearts and their heart's desire. Lord, you know what they desire to do. Lord, God, help them to come on one accord. And Lord, if they need wisdom, let them ask you because you said you give it liberally and you will not even argue about it. Oh, God, I just ask you to touch each member of the school board one by one. And as the old saints used to say, touch them all together. God, let them come together. Lord God, I guess they operate on the majority rule. So let the majority hear your voice. And God, you said this day, if we hear your voice, harden not your hearts as you did in the day of provocation. God, your word is true. God, you're real. God, you love us. God, you gave your son to shed his blood for us. Lord, be with this group. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Minister McLean, for that inspirational prayer. Um, feel free to come back and join us at any time. She told me she'd be heading out to do some mission work um, this afternoon. And thank you for all you do for our community. I welcome students and their parents, staff, community, all board members, those who are joining us in person, and those who join us via live stream. Special thanks to Mr. Lowe for assisting with the technology. Today is Thursday, March 21st, 2024, and I officially call today's meeting of the Clinton City Schools Board of Education to order. Thank you again to everyone, our teachers, other staff, students, parents, board members, and the community who makes our district the best it can be. We recognize and appreciate your hard work and dedication. Many thanks to everyone for working hard every day and for making every minute of every day count. I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize one of our members, Mr. Jeremy Edgerton, who was recently named Member of the Year for the Clinton Sampson Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Edgerton was honored at the Chamber's 77th Annual Banquet. He is the owner of North Carolina Marble and Granite. Congratulations and keep up the great work. Let's give him a round of applause. 
your hard work is recognized and valued, Jeremy. Our greatest, deepest gratitude is extended to our frontline and essential workers, those who care for us and protect us. Your hard work, commitment, and dedication are recognized and appreciated. Our thoughts are also extended to our students, employees, and their families who are coping with sickness and the loss of loved ones. A special remembrance is requested for our city, county, state, nation, national, and international partners as we address all the challenges that we face today. Our March and April Students of the Month and their families will join us at our April 17th meeting. No matter who or what we are today, we can all be better tomorrow. We are stronger together. I will begin with a roll call. Please answer as I call your name. Mr. Jeremy Edgerton. Present. Pastor Russ Emanuel. Present. Mr. Clark Hales. Present, Madam Chair. Dr. Oscar Rodriguez. Present. Thank you. Dr. Rodriguez has joined us remotely. Ms. Carol Worley. Present. Thank you, Miss Worley. She's also joined Present. us. Present. I heard you, Carol. <laughs> She's also joined us remotely. And Attorney Rebecca Williams. Present. Thank you. Our superintendent, his staff, Dr. Wesley Johnson. Present. Ms. Emily Devane. Present. Mr. John Lowe. Present. Dr. Teresa Malinas. Present. Ms. Sheila Peterson. Present. Dr. William Van. Present. Ms. Nicole Hayes. Present. Please stand and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're also joined in on us by the principal of Sampson Middle School, Dr. Tony Faison. Welcome. Thank you. Next uh, item on the agenda is public comments, and no one has registered for this session, so we'll move on to approval of board agenda. Board members, you've had an opportunity to review the agenda. If there are no revisions, I'll ask for a motion to accept the agenda as it's written. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Edgerton. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Pastor Emanuel. All in favor, let it be known by the word aye. Aye. Uh, what poses have the right, same right? Motion carried. Thank you. Next item is approval of consent agenda. Again, you've had an opportunity to review the consent agenda. It's rather lengthy this time uh, from A to J. Give you a minute to think about those. And then look back through them. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Edgerton. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hales. All in favor, let it be known by the word aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carried. Um, Mr. Lowe, technology and facilities. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have some brief items to share in technology and facilities information. And uh, as usual, I've highlighted what's new. Um, you just approved uh, an information we'll be sending to the county commissioners and the Mr. Causey's office. And part of that request is based upon, a lot of that request, the capital outlay portion is based upon our long range capital outlay planning. So I've shared that document with you. And then there were some particular requests for cost estimates on individual projects. Um, some of those have estimates from vendors and others are estimates based on what I've learned in the past year or two and pricing on other projects. Um, so all of that is available for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. We, we are paving at Butler Avenue. That was right. Correct. The board recently in their last meeting approved a project for Butler Avenue front drive and teacher parking repaving. That will begin as soon as school is out. On any of these other paving quotes, is there, if you had to rank them in terms of, I mean, Butler Avenue's needed it, of course. If you had to rank them, how would you rank them? 
probably in worse condition is the stadium drive. There's a lot of alligatoring in that drive, which would that's going to require us to pull that up and redo the base and start over. Um, next behind that is probably Sunset Avenue, both sides of the concrete pad on the Fence Street side, and then the teacher parking. And then very similar shape is LC Carr. A lot of tree roots and damage across that parking lot, and it's pretty worn. How has our um, energy savings with the solar panels been lately? Uh, we, we don't have any recent information on the solar panels because the, uh, the reporting piece and the software in it has got a glitch. Um, Mr. Bill Powell with CMTA. I there was so much pollen. <laughs> well, the, uh, that might be affecting it some, but we wouldn't know because of the glitch in the software. But Bill Powell with CMTA is actually coming tomorrow afternoon to do a reset uh, with that company. And hopefully we can get that straightened out. Right now, it looks like we're consuming every bit of the energy we're, produ we're producing, which is absolutely incorrect. Mm -hmm. So they, they just need to do a reset and hopefully that'll get us back on track. Mr. Lowe, if you would, would you just remind our board members uh, uh, on average about what we receive from our county commissioners for capital outlay? Yes, on average, the past year or so, it's been averaging around $400,000 from the county commissioners for capital outlay. I just wanted him to give you that number because when you see those paving needs up there or the air conditioning needs or the tennis court rip and replace, that you can see that when you only get four hundred thousand dollars from your county commissioners, and that's not even to uh, mention uh, the uh, Sampson Middle School roofing project, John. That's what three and a half, four million dollars. That's correct. Just put all that in perspective. Um, you know how long it takes to 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 get some of these projects completed, and we have completed need ba needs based capital every year of course we got that john 19 2019 yeah the first year that uh needs based public school capital funding was available for repair and renovation was 2019 20 and we applied and we did receive it that year we've applied every year since but of course new construction gets primary funding priority and so that's been the case the past few years is that all the funds available have gone towards new construction. These are Dr. Johnson referenced that here's our most recent updated budget estimates for our most uh, in dire need roof areas, which is Sampson Middle School Academic Wing at 1.7 million, the Gymnasium Wing at just over 1.4, um, Butler Avenue, this is the 300 building when it says 1.13. 180,000 Sunset Avenue. We're starting to get a lot of really large bubbles in that roof membrane, uh, all, just over half a million. Maintenance department, which is leaking on the stuff in the warehouse, 330,000. And LC Car 300 building, the shingle roof that has multiple areas of leak, 190,000. And I did get an estimate that would repair as opposed to completely replace that roof, but the estimate to repair is almost $100,000, just over 94. So these are our most dire issues at the moment, but you can see that's quite a bit, and that comprises the majority of our capital outlay requests to the county commissioners in that letter. How, how much is, I know it's, I know this is probably in the long-term plan. I hadn't clicked on it, but how much of these projects here, if any, have been mapped out in that long-term reign? There we go. Most all of these projects have been mapped out in the long-range plan. Some of them in prior years, which I've hidden and not shown because they're past years. Um, so they've, they've been in the long range plan and are now mapped out for the next five year period to some extent to plan for them. Um, as we know, our county commissioners are 97th in ability to fund and in the top five in effort to fund. So we applaud them for the amount that they're able to give us, but 
as we know, our, our facilities and school facilities and county and municipality facilities across the state are in dire need of some capital refurbishments. But uh, we'll, we'll ask and continue to apply to grant funding opportunities to do what we can. Thank you, John. If you, John, if you'll just stop right there, uh, the balance, I think that's at the end of the five years and just go over where our, everybody can see that figure. So if we complete the long range capital plan over the next, is that five years, John? We would be $22 million in the hole. So that just goes to say that, uh, and uh, Mr. Lowe did a great job of noting uh, the numbers from the latest report about our county commissioners and their ability to fund and what they're actually doing. And we appreciate their efforts. I just wanted us to stop and pause on this for a few minutes tonight because our needs are growing and uh, getting uh, <laughs> more vast every day. And we've got to get this money from somewhere, if not from uh, local, from state. There has to be some kind of, I'm hoping maybe a statewide bond referendum or something, uh, because this is not just a need in Clinton City. This is a need everywhere. Um, and <laughs> the math's not adding up. Correct. That's right. Correct. Because we can't. We can't continue to operate. And that's why I asked Mr. Lowe to share that average that we get. Again, we appreciate the efforts of our county commissioners. $400,000 every year, we would have to save that money, not spend it on anything for nearly 10 consecutive years to pay for a roof at Sampson Middle School. What's in our fund balance right now? Fund balance is roughly five and a half, four and a half. Four and a half. But you're told uh, by most everyone that you need to have six months of uh, reserves mm -hmm. in your fund balance. What is six months? Probably closer to um, 25. Just Kentucky Weenage. Just. It's not 4.5 by any means. Well, our annual budget this year was what, 43 million? So if you say 43 million divided by two, it's 21 and a half. <laughs> Yeah, and, it's and, three to six, six months operating expenses, yes, correct? Yes, yeah, it's not it's half not of budget. your budget. We we'll have to get back with you on that figure. Because if it, I'm one of six, but if that, my question is, if that requirement is or recommendation is six months, and that number's two million, just to make, what are we saving the other two and a half for? That's my question. Or if we have a storm and this whole roof is ripped off and we need four million dollars. Well, four million dollars it would cover part of it okay. but, but not all point, but, my, <clears throat> but my bigger point is who are we waiting for what i mean we've got kids and buildings to serve now. <clears throat> well we've put in and that's what we would say to the question we've requested needs-based capital every year I mean, our hope is, again, we got it one time, $898,000. We would hope that we would get it again. I mean, we're submitting these grants every year. You know, you don't want to come off $4 million to pay for a roof if somebody else, is, you know. Oh, I'm not saying write a check for the roof. I'm saying if the requirements of $2 million and our fund balance is four and a half, there's two and a half million in wiggle room. I'm not saying spend two and a half million, but what I am saying is, who are we waiting to spend the money on? We're we're a school system. We're not a for-profit business. We're not wanting that money to sit there to earn interest on a CD. Okay, that money is to be spent on the kids and the facilities that we're responsible for educating and providing for now. And I I, I, I see what you're saying. I agree with you. But we can't have a today plan and spend four million dollars, spend two million dollars 
what's going to happen in five years or with the payroll taxes or with this bonus that we're doing if everybody comes to school i, I understand we need to have a cushion we hate to have but a we don't need to we don't need to bring it all the way down to I, the minimum oh i'm cushion. not saying draw it all the way down but i am saying there's no reason to have two and a half million dollars in excess just sitting there for a what if i agree with that i i don't think it's a what if i think we can show on paper we just showed we have $22 million worth of needs over the next five years. I can take that money down to zero right now by putting a roof on this bill. Uh, that's not my point. Right. My point is the six of us are elected to make sure that the facilities and the kids and the staffs look at. If there's an extra two and a half million, I'm not saying write a check for two and a half million, but if you can spend a hundred and fifty thousand on a two hundred and fifty thousand on a parking lot at Sunset Avenue, strategically spend the money. What would you say is our most need right now, Mr. Luck? The roof on this building? The the dot most desperate need we have is roof on Sampson Middle School. Um that wall at sunset where we still have leaks through the lc car building 300 building that is leaking i would say in 60 percent of the classrooms um and then you know we've got paving to tackle we've got a 27 year old hvac unit behind the auditorium at sunset we've got older units serving the media center at lc car and butler that need attention to hvac units there's it, it's you know it's you own houses it's always something but amplified times 10 when it's school buildings and the number of buildings we possess so um we we tackle everything we can i've made hopefully made some strides since dr j appointed me to look after facilities and maintenance some things that like dr b mentioned there was roof leaks in the multi-purpose building that Butler Avenue when she was principal there 20 some years ago and we finally got that resolved under my tenure so I work at it and we, we've also still got to be fiscally responsible because it we you know we talk in cabinet about this a lot but we're starting to spend from fund balance annually once again because local positions that aren't paid for anywhere else um, attendance bonuses um, things of that sort there's there's no other funding source except to pull those from fund balance and when you start to pull three hundred thousand dollars for attendance bonuses 4.5 million goes away fast and then you're down to challenges like we just saw an ednc.org article on fund balances across the state we don't want to end up like a, a weldon city that has negative fund balance either so just got to be responsible i agree you What's don't it? you don't need a, a huge bank roll you don't need you know clinton city shouldn't have 20 million sitting aside and then needs that are not being handled but you also have to be responsible when was the last time th didn't the county increase it the amount they gave us last year or the year before didn't they give us a little extra money am i remembering that right I yeah la last year it was i th i believe i and don't hold me to this number people who are taking notes publicly but it was like four hundred and twenty three thousand dollars because our, and our request was much more than that and they did everything they could but, 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 and when dr j first started it was uh around three hundred thousand and it went up to around 330 um and so it has moved up from the county commissioners each year um so you know we appreciate their efforts but again there's across the county not just clinton city schools across the county and not just sampson county schools and clinton city schools across all the needs of the county there's a lot that they have to fund and maintain so yeah and that's what i would say i, I appreciate the efforts to build new schools i think that's great and i think they should have needs-based capital for new, new schools but they need to have they need to have at least the same food. amount of money in my opinion probably doubled or tripled for repair needs um again we, we if we have to come out of fund balance and put a roof on this school we'd be broke 
and I think that's where John's done a good job is differentiating between them. In other words, I don't think anybody sitting around these tables expects us to write a check for three million dollars to put a on this bill. I think those are the type of goals that you have for a grant. And the facilities around here have come light years since he's been in charge of them and since I've been fortunate to be on the board. Um, and so we do a great job. My, my, I don't want to get my words misconstrued. My point was, I'm not, I don't, as me, Clark Hales doesn't expect us to stroke a check for $3 million for a roof. That's a grant. Those are the type of things you go that route for, or you get with the county commissioners and develop a plan, something. But the low hanging fruit stuff, in my mind, is why you keep that additional money there. Okay. If I'm going to do a $300,000 renovation to my house, I'm going to go to the credit union and borrow the money. But if I'm going to replace the kitchen cabinets for $15,000, I may pay for that out of my pocket. That's my point. We can pay for payment out of our pocket. And we need to be continuing what we're doing, looking at the grants and the different partnerships for the big stuff. That's why I mean by all that. And, and from my perspective, I'm not necessarily just talking about facilities. I realize that's what we're talking about now at Capital Projects, but with other things that may come up throughout the district that we, we that we may need that may not be capital. <laughs> that we don't just sit on the money and not use it for some of those things academic wise, um, not just, I'm not just addressing capital. Mr. Law, have you finished? Yes, ma'am, that's all I had if there are not any additional questions. Any additional questions for Mr. Law? not thank you all for your comments and we're just living in a time where these buildings have been around so long the needs to keep them repaired is probably higher than to almost build a new one. <laughs> the, the county technically the county technically owns these buildings correct That, that is correct. The deed would say Sampson County Board of Commissioners. Isn't that yes. the, 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 it, technically Yes, Clinton City Schools. Uh, you know, when when I first moved out of my parents' house and was paying rent and I needed a roof on the the house I was renting, I didn't find the money to pay the roof. I called the landlord and said, I need a roof on this house. Is that not a possibility? Uh, that's what we do with the request each year. That's why the county commissioners we send a request and they grant a certain amount. They don't they don't usually specify, you know, you must use it for this individual project. They they see our request and all the projects listed and they allot what they feel they can allot to Clinton City Schools. And then we take what we're allotted and address the most immediate need with what we've been allotted. And that's have that's we, what we've been working on. Um I know it's gonna rain pretty much all day Saturday, would it be a good idea to find a good rainy day and invite the county commissioners to come and walk their buildings so they can see how bad the roofs are leaking? Well, I, if, if they would visit, um, the last time school systems were allowed to do a presentation with the budget proposal, I actually took a piece of this roof where we had fixed roof drains to show the rusted and deteriorating portions of the roof deck and uh, that was not accepted well. Some people said I was violating rules that I couldn't do show and tell at the meetings, but I, I didn't see any rules to that effect. And so since then, we've not been able to make a in-person presentation from any of the school systems since that time. So, Mr. Lowe, am I rubbing off on you? It's great as it got Mr. Edgerton, I don't think it's that they don't know that we have needs. 
I just think we're just getting the funding that they are choosing to give us. And then we have to decide how best to spend that money and, and hope for more and more every year. But um, that is one thing Dr. Johnson said is it's just not a Clinton City right. um, issue. However, that's the, the district that we're concerned about and we want to make sure it's the best that it can be. But um, I think your idea of a bond ref referendum may be better than looking for grants because there's not a lot of grant sources out there for repair, maybe for construction, but not repair. So let me direct this towards what you're talking about with the county commissioners. So when we were going to present, I was a part of those meetings. Then all the money needed to go to the EMS response building. That $10 million is over with. That building's built. So where's that money going now? Crickets. Figure out a name for you. Get their name on something on a nice flag. Put a block on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Johnson said, Dr. Van, Dr. Van. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Thank you all for your comments and your thinking and and your and your drive and your motivation uh dr Vane. i do think though asking them to come visit is a really good idea and it might get them to join me in between you know we've done our planning and i'm a but i think that would be extremely beneficial lay the cards out on the table you know be transparent Ask hard questions. I mean, they're elected just like we are. We get, asked, Some of them are. we get asked hard questions when people get upset. So, no reason why we can't ask mm -hmm. hard questions in return. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair and Board of Education members for allowing me an opportunity to share some information about our federal programs. Specifically, I wanted to talk about our Indian Ed program and our Title I program. Thank you to our superintendent and Board of Education for allowing me the opportunity to attend the United Tribes Conference. Do you have the, Mr. Lowe, could you stroll back up for me? I'm sorry. So, if you would go to the Indian Air portion, that's where I wanted to start it. Thank you. I want to start with our Indian Ed portion. I want to start with Indian Ed because I recently <laughs> had the opportunity to attend the United Tribes Conference. While I was at the conference, I had the opportunity to learn about the rich history of our Indian Ed program right here in Clinton City. I wanted to highlight that because that is something that I, for one, did not know was as major right here within our district. So I wanted to have some conversation around our Indian Ed population just to be sure that we keep that population in the forefront and do not forget that they are here actually within our school district. In Clinton City Schools, we do have a large population of Indian students. Last year, we had about 161 students. We wanted to check to be sure that each student had their 506 form, the form that is required to claim any heritage within the school system. Being that we checked those forms, we found that we decreased to right around 134, but we are hopeful that those numbers will increase as well. At the United Tribes Conference, the theme this year was our children, our legacy. I was excited about it because actually being able to see how rich and how dedicated the conference was towards just showcasing the legacy. Some of the things that we were able to learn about, we were able to learn about what DPI is doing with the conference, next slide, I'm sorry, to partner with the Indian population to be sure that their heritage and their history is known throughout our state. 
we were able to talk about the SACI report. Next slide, please. The SACI report. The SACI report was real beneficial. It was able to detail what we are doing to impact our students academically in areas that we need to work on as well. In addition to the SACI report, we were able to attend other sessions about the history and culture of our Indian population. Our goal was to divide and conquer so that we can attend as many sessions as possible with the hope of bringing this back to the larger mass here within Clinton City. Some of the things that we actually are doing right here, right now, we are advertising for our Indian Ed coordinator position. We are wanting to increase the visibility of our Indian population by placing bulletin boards in all of the schools, basically highlighting our Indian Ed history. We are creating a social hit, excuse me, a social media page for the history of our Indian education program. We want to design a logo. That's a high goal. We have to find someone to design the logo for us. But we saw the work that we were able to do with our dark horse logo and wanted to do something similar for our Clinton City Schools NES students, possibly offering summer camps, purchasing books, and collaborating with the Indian Ed Tribal Council just to make sure that we are, again, keeping our Indian Ed population in the forefront and doing things that are beneficial to them as well. And our goal next year is to send even more people to the United Tribes Conference and conferences that are relative to our Indian Ed population, more administrators, possibly board members, so forth and so on. Again, I wanted to start there just so I could be sure to answer any questions about our any air program. Pastor Russ, if there's something that you wanted to throw in or chime in on that we experienced during the conference, I want to allow you an opportunity before we went into our federal program, something that we commonly discuss for the sake of time. Yeah, um, uh, great time there. I uh, really enjoyed collaborating with all the different tribes and the other um educational admins that were there, the speakers. It was a really good opportunity for us too, for here at just Clinton City Schools, because we were well represented. Dr. Van took the time out to go. Uh, so I thank you for that. Um, I think one of the main things that we talked about as a group and what we saw is that LEAs that are doing extremely well in their Native American Indian Heritage Programs, Indian Ed Programs have a coordinator. And that is the step for Clinton City Schools. And so hopefully with that being advertised, that spot can be filled. And I really think it will help us to be able to navigate and have a point person out front to help lead. Um, I think everybody in this room knows that we have, when I say we, I'm talking all of us have worked extremely hard this year in particular to put it back at the forefront. Um, and so there's been a lot of time and dedication to that and getting to this point that we're at now, that is the next step is to provide us with a coordinator. So hopefully we can see those things come to pass. And, and I would like to extend an invitation to everybody in this room as Dr. Van just did. It's a phenomenal conference. Uh, it was put on extremely well. I was extremely, I'm, I'm y'all know I'm proud to be a Native American, but I was extremely proud to see how well it was represented and uh, just the collaborativeness of it and, and how well it was. So thanks. And that's pretty much my gist for it. I look forward to seeing what it's going to do for Clinton City Schools, the kids within this district to be able to make an impact like having the opportunity to provide some input for a logo, seeing what that looks like, making some t-shirts, having summer classes that they can attend together. So those are extremely good things. Dr. Fain, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. When um, Ms. Jacobs presented to us a couple months ago, she was talking about um, getting the parent committee up and going. Is mm -hmm. How's that going or? Is, Actually, it's coming on pretty well. We have our next meeting, our committee meeting next week, in which we are going to talk about more things in which we could do to increase parent involvement. But not only that, just bringing this information that we learned back from the conference, organizing that information to present to a larger group. We are seeing increases when we do have our parent meetings. It is coming along. We are telling them to tell a friend, bring a friend with you. 
So we are seeing progress with that. I do feel confident that as we get the message out there, as we continue to promote, it will continue to grow. Madam Chair, I just want to echo that. Uh, that was the highest attended meeting that we've had was the parent. So it was it was attended well. And I think just having the conversation has really helped to kind of get the word out. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Would you like for me to go through the Title I federal portion of the presentation for the sake of time? Mm -hmm. So a brief synopsis, just looking at our Title I presentation, I wanted to, again to keep our Indian Ed program in the limelight. Basically, we have had our monitoring program for our Title I program. We had that about three years ago. We were not found to have any findings, which was a great thing. There are certain requirements when we do have to have our evaluation for lack of a better word right now and once again we were not required to do anything with our federal programs we do have a couple of parent initiatives going on within our districts our parents are required to meet with our schools they do receive parent involvement funds one percent of those funds are used for all parents if you scroll down continue to go john i'll skip over just looking at our balances or our numbers for our Title I budget, we receive around a million dollars for our disadvantaged students. We receive around $118,000, excuse me, we receive around $200,000 just for preparation, high professional development for our teachers and staff and other stakeholders. We do receive funds for language acquisition around $80,000 and to make sure we promote a healthy, safe, well-rounded child, we receive around $120,000. And of course, we have our Title VI program, which is our Indian Air program. We already talked about parent and family engagement, 1% of all Funds are dedicated towards parent and family engagement to make sure that our parents are involved in school activities as well and know what their Title I dollars are being spent on. Just more allowable expenses that you can use federal dollars for. More allowable expenses, homeless education, foster care, early childhood program, which we all do here at Clinton City. We can dedicate funds towards delinquent and neglected youth. If we have district-wide instructional initiatives, such as our book <laughs> program that we established a couple of years to increase the number of books in our libraries after COVID. And then if you have funds that you're not quite sure what to do, you can place those in an unbudgeted reserve, which we do not. Are there any questions? Questions of Dr. Van, any board members? I have one. What's the Indian Air budget? Uh, the Indian but the Indian Air budget hovers around thirty thousand dollars between twenty five to thirty thousand dollars. Got a dollar amount per child that has the five hundred six. So yes, the five hundred six forms do play a part in funding. You said earlier that we had initially 161 students now it's down to 134 is that because of paperwork or they no. moved out students have graduated and transferred to others not because of paperwork if there was an issue because of paperwork we actually called those parents to be sure that we got the information that we needed all right any other questions for me all righty if no other questions of dr van thank you so much and we'll move on to dr johnson thank you madam chair board members um always a pleasure to be for you with you tonight i'm going to kind of speed up this might be the, the new uh, the new way we do our board meetings y'all might put me at the last and give me like 10 minutes to go uh, but that's okay uh we, we got our good news here um we got a review of shout outs uh if you'll do the review of shout outs john if you'll click on that most of these you have seen uh we do want to shout out devin owens uh she has worked uh very uh hard and uh this school year and worked with dr molinas and others we've actually had four walk and talk sessions this year in the past i believe 
maybe when I got here, we were doing one and then we started doing two. We actually uh, had two separate ones just for BTs this year. And uh, we even changed how we did it between the first one and the second one. We've learned a lot with our walk and talk sessions. We think it's great. Uh, probably needs to be something that we present on in a conference sometime soon. We just do such a good job with our walk and talks and it's, it's really a great day. Uh, after that, we've got uh, some DECA members, uh, three very distinguished looking gentlemen up here. Uh, we've got uh, James Darden, Jackson Gunnels, and Camden Parker. They all attended uh, the NC DECA competition in Greensboro. It says last week, but that was back in February. There was over 5,000 people in attendance at that wow. conference, uh, and they had a great time. Uh, James Darden and Jackson Gunnels took an additional entrepreneur test. Camden Parker took an additional market math test and they all you can see them with their uh, nice blue suits on and Jackson received top 10 in the state on role play in hotel and lodging management. Very good. So we're expecting them to have great, uh, great things come from these young men in the uh, time to come. Uh, uh, we recently had both the middle school and the high school that attended the Southeastern Bandmasters Association music performance that was held at UNC Pembroke on March the 5th. Uh, but uh, we, our middle school, received superior rating from all three stage performers, judges, and the sight reading judge. And Mr. Lowe could tell you what that means, but it means the highest level you can possibly get. And we got it from all the judges and sight reading. Uh, so congratulations to our middle school band. A couple pictures there. Go uh, yeah, go horses. And then our concert band received a rating uh, of two from all three stage performance judges and a rating of one from the sight reading judge for an overall rating of excellence uh, or excellent. And so congratulations to our high school bands. Uh, a big kudos to y'all. Of course, y'all know how well uh, Miss Bevelin and Mr. Jeffrey Tart do uh, for our bands. And we just want to celebrate them and all of our students. And they did a great job uh, for their concert. Congratulations to Miss Evan Gillespie for being selected to attend Governor's School this summer. It's a good picture of Ev uh, Evan there. Congratulations to Miss Maddie Reeves, who was winner of the CHS Talent Show. Uh, good picture of her there. This is real exciting. This next one, Bailey Waters submitted an audition and she was selected and she will be representing Clinton City Schools in the Macy's Great American Marching Band. Okay. And she is going to attend the 2024 Thanksgiving Day Parade. Y'all know that Mr. Jeffrey Tart has been involved in a couple of these big pageants over the last, I mean, not as big, <laughs> uh, parades. Uh, I got patches on my mind because you'll see that picture in just a minute. Uh, but these couple of these parades. And so we uh, celebrate Bailey and uh, her successes and being a part of the Thanksgiving Day Parade uh, in November. Elena Starling uh, recently tied for first place at the Hunter Safety Contest. Now they broke the tie. Did we win? Well, we had a recount. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so therefore, Sansom Middle School um, team for Hunter Skills won for the region. All right. So um, she yeah. is probably going to be, hopefully, the highest score in the region. So That's hopefully fair. the team will go to the state. Elena, go ahead, girl. Uh, <laughs> uh, the last I heard at cabinet, it was tied. So uh, I'm glad to know the uh, new information. All right, now here we finally get to not, I can say the word now, pageant, not parade. Uh, but here are our winners all last weekend. We were here all weekend for the parade, uh, for the pageants, <laughs> not parades. Uh, and uh, Miss Congeniality uh, was Aranya Wright, sponsorship, Lily Bass. First runner up, McKaylee Knight and Miss Sampson Middle School, Aranya Wright again. Okay. So, congratulations to those young ladies. Beautiful, beautiful. Our next picture is the high school girls. So, Miss Congeniality, Elisa Anna Woodbury, uh, sponsorship, Jaxie Thornton. Second runner up, Jewel Carr. Our first runner up, Aliciana Woodbury. And our new Miss Clinton High School is Kaylee Parrish. Okay. Uh, then we've got Oh, uh, huge congratulations to all. This is our this is our new 2024 Queens Court. These are all of our queens. Okay. Now we do one per grade level. You're oh, fixing no. to see those from pre-K to six. 
but I wanted to shout this picture out because these girls rate well, these girls and their parents raised over ten thousand dollars for our media centers and Very so a big good. shout out to them and these are all our new queens now we're going to go by the queens you have a tiny miss and a little miss lck so you've got andrea alvarado she's on the left she's our tiny miss lck or pre-k queen our kindergarten queen or our little miss lck is zaya zachary now we go to Butler Avenue. Our ambassador is the young lady who raised the most money for the elementary pageant. And she is Jalasia Bowden. She's on the far left. Then you've got Tiny Miss Butler Avenue is Amaya Morris. She's in the middle. And then you've got Little Miss Butler Avenue, Riley Drawin. She's on the right. And then we'll go to our Sunset pageant. You've got Miss uh, Sunset. Jocelyn Pinnock is on the left. Little Miss Sunset, Brooklyn Griffin is in the middle, and Petite Miss Bella Dudley is on the far right. So okay. congratulations to all of our pageants. And then I wanted, John, if you'll pull up that picture, the Aspiring Superintendents Program. Ms. Peterson recently participated in the Aspiring Superintendents Program. We had uh, Dr. Van and Dr. Malanis that participated last year. Uh, it's hard to see, but she's standing up in the red, she is just in front, just behind the girl in the red seated. So right okay. there is Miss Peterson. Okay. And congrats, yeah. congratulations. We've actually had three aspiring superintendents in the last two years complete the program. There so, uh, God bless you. yeah, <laughs> yes. Uh, but they're doing, we're doing great things. Uh, all right, John, if you'll go to just. Uh, was working with SMS and CHS bands and sponsored uh, through the Fayetteville Symphony Orchestra artist in the schools. And here is a uh, Twitter post of them working uh, there. Uh, we have CHS seniors that were recently awarded the North the, the, the State Employees Credit Union Scholarship. I'm on page two, John. Um, I got you. And uh, they will be both uh, Lindsey Cabral and James Darden will be receiving twelve hundred and fifty dollars per semester for up to eight semesters. So congratulations to Lindsey and James on their being awarded the State Employees Credit Union Scholarship. We've got some Simple Gifts winners as well. So Simple Gifts winners, seniors Jesse Herrera. Uh, and Evan Johnson, both will receive unmet need up to $10,000 per year. Uh, Jesse is going to Hollins and Evan is going to Presbyterian. And then Walker Spell hasn't made up his mind exactly, but he's going to be receiving up to $7,000 per year. Uh, so congratulations to them. Thrive Scholars, you know, I've been talking about Thrive Scholars all year. We actually have two students, uh, Dr. Um, Melinas uh, on Monday went to the presentation, uh, but Valerie Fraudenberger, uh, Roblero, and Mikhail Wright will be uh, members that have been selected from Clinton City Schools to be Thrive Scholars. Remember, that's a six year scholars program. And uh, they will be attending Amherst uh, this summer and Northwestern next summer. So, congratulations to those two students. And then real, real exciting that our Dark Horse Fellows Junior class 
will be expanding to 14 new members and three of those members are young men very good. Uh, and 11 young women uh, for next year. So ex very excited about uh, our, this continued interest in um, teaching and learning. Uh, John, just regular good news uh, enrollment update. We won't open that is uh, numbers are basically equal to where they were last time. Uh, I did want to uh, in, uh, inform the board that we are looking at some possible possible options for temporary employee services, uh, and we're considering adding substitute teachers to that list. Uh, we will more to come in our April or May meetings. We're looking at several different options for that. Uh, Kelly services, ESS, temporary connections, uh, and we're just looking at what's going to be the best uh We'll say bang for our buck uh, with that. So really excited about that. We've been looking at this for probably close to a year, I would say. Had several presentations. Um, we probably are leaning in a certain direction, but we'll get that to you in April or May. And that would be a consent agenda item. We could talk about it and discuss it. And I just wanted to let you know that we were talking about that. Uh, the MOU was presented the night for the Dark Horse Fellows, Teaching Fellows Grant that you guys have already uh, approved on consent. Uh, the teacher working condition survey, uh, we don't need to open it, but John, I've got it hyp hyperlinked here. If you want to see what our current numbers are, we've got one school, that's two schools that are already at 100%. One school just needs one more teacher to complete it at LCK. Uh, Sampson Middle School is also getting close to 100%. Uh, and uh, Butler Avenue still got a little ways to go. Uh, you come in here, you type in Clinton City, John's showing you what to do. It'll come up and you'll see that Clinton High is already at 100, Sunset's already at 100, uh, LC Carr's at uh, 97, and Sampson Middle's at 93%, Butler Avenue. Uh, we've got a few more teachers that need to complete the survey. Are we doing anything to talk to them, to encourage them, or are we just leaving it? Not a whole lot we can do. Uh, it's kind of spearheaded by the teachers. So you've got a lead teacher. The administrators aren't really supposed to have a whole lot to do with the teacher working condition survey. Uh, so it's spearheaded by a lead teacher at the school. Um, and it's, it is different this year uh, because we used to have to get them all in a room and give them like a little cutout slip of paper. This is your special code to get in to the survey. Now they get an email from the uh, teacher working condition survey and they get their own link. Mm -hmm. And so they have to use that link to log in. Uh, Dr. Dr. J, I've been pondering this and I started to look at the number of invitees. And I think we may have some discrepancy at Butler because I know there are less teachers at Butler than at Clinton High and Sunset and they seem to have the most invitees. So I wonder if the percentage is skewed and he's actually got closer to 100 percent of his staff responding. It's just their numbers of invitees are inordinately high for a grades one and two school with the population they have. Mr. Lowe, that's a great point because, yeah, why would Butler Avenue have more teachers than Clinton High School? <laughs> they would. It would. Two grades compared to four grades. Uh, yeah, so that makes sense. Thank you for pointing that out. So that they may be closer to 100%. Um, some other items I wanted to make sure you were aware of, the project outreach, it, uh, that grant was decreased and we don't know a decision yet on the ELIS grant. So there's a possibility that we will continue to partner with Mr. Glenn Faison, uh, but right now we're probably looking at a, a program during the summer. Uh, just wanted to share that. Uh, we've already talked about Thrive Scholars and the two of our students were selected for that. Uh, what else is highlighted, John? We've already talked about the county budget information. We talked talk about that a lot tonight. Uh, Eagle Point Properties and what we're talking about doing at College Street. Uh, we're looking for the right partners for this project. Uh, we're not, we've not forgotten about this project. We are uh, really hopeful to see this project come to fruition. Uh, we've rekindled some discussion, uh, but right now uh, we're just looking for the right partners on that project. Uh, partnership with Edenton Jawan, uh, that's been on pause with Eden Jawan this year, but I've been discussing it with other members of our, uh, I guess you would say, uh, RISA, Southeastern Education Alliance, and we are looking at that becoming a regional priority for next year 
and bringing on additional partners uh, that uh, have expanded offerings that maybe we don't have here in Clinton City. Like if we wanted to teach anatomy and physiology or physics, we might partner with some other uh, bigger uh, LEAs like a Pitt County or a, a New Hanover uh, or some of those other options we've been talking about. Uh, I don't think there's really anything update from NCDPI. Uh, and then you've got some important dates coming up uh, for you to be aware of. Questions for me? Dr. Jones, is there a way that someone can make a call, email, or text to teaching working conditions to survey if there's a glitch or if Butler Avenue yes. is, is not correct because they're going to report it statewide if they only had 75 percent that's what they'll report if someone doesn't let them know absolutely uh we'll uh, uh we will share that with mr stenson and have him to double check his numbers and then there's a way that he can um i know Notify. that mr dirks feels like he has that all of his people has answered and is showing that one has not so uh he's already reported his it should be 32 and that number would probably be closer to what Butler Avenue's is. So I'm thinking 46 is probably about everybody. But yes, we will we will work work with him on that. Other questions? Uh, I wanted to ask about the project outreach. I was in a conversation with um, Glenn, Mr. Faison about the project outreach, and he was sharing with me that um, he was blessed to receive an, um, an additional grant, and they asked him about serving additional students. Did he have the capacity to serve additional students? So um, when I first read that, um, I was concerned about making sure that we would still be able to be a part of that so um when will we know if he will still be providing services to our students i talked to him yesterday mm -hmm. I, I talked to him yesterday and actually today he sent you a message i forgot to say but at any rate um he did receive the ellis grant mm -hmm. and it was um an additional grant for him however they've now decreased it and they did delay the um award and date so he's not he knows he's not gonna get anything this spring okay but he does want to do something um in the summer um but he's waiting for the the exact amount to be awarded and then he's gonna get with wesley and the cabinet to come up with a plan he he's also looking at maybe um doing something with middle schoolers if mm -hmm. possible mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's still on yep. on on go but he's waiting for the final awarding so we're still in it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you both. Good questions. Other questions for me? It's great to see one of our teachers here tonight. All right. No other questions. Ms. Peterson, I'm going to just put you on the spot here and tell us about the professional development that board that board members have to complete in a short amount of time. Um, the professional development is about two and a half hours. It's self-paced, um, so you can start and stop. Um, at the end, there is a certificate that you will receive. I would love to have that um, certificate on file just in case we're audited. Um, but it goes back to the contracts and confidentiality and all the laws behind that. So that will be sent out by Dr. Brunson. I'm going to send her an email tonight with the information again. Um, I believe Ms. Nicole sent that out a couple of weeks ago, but I will send it out again. And please complete it by April the 1st. Yay! Homework! Ms. P Ms. Peterson, is that is that the conflict of interest? I, I recently completed my version of that, which is a little different from board members, and it it is very in-depth but very pertinent so thank you miss peters um homework by april 1st so she's giving us just a little over a week to get it done all right thank you any other comments from any board members i know miss Worley came in a little bit late you have any comments thoughts pastor russ any additional comments Dr. O, you still with us? Yes, ma'am. 
Any comments at this time? We're almost ready to adjourn. <laughs> if no other comments, our next regularly scheduled meeting is Thursday. Wednesday. Wednesday is it a Wednesday we're moving around Wednesday April 17th at four o'clock we think right here at Sampson Middle School so put that on your calendar April 17th and again those of you who are getting ready for your spring break from work I know you uh, richly deserve some time off so enjoy yourselves and your family if nothing else claims our attention I need a motion to adjourn I make that motion Motion made by Doc, I mean, Pastor Russ. Can I get a second? Second, second Miss Worley. All in favor, let it be known by the word aye. Aye. Motion uh, period. Meeting adjourned. Thank y'all. Record time. Thank you. We did good.